Welcome to PHT in the Morning with your host, Pastor David Miller from the Pentecostal Holiness Tabernacle in Cincinnati, Ohio. Good morning and welcome to another episode of PHT in the Morning with Pastor David Miller. And uh, I am Pastor Miller and I'll be your host again this morning. And I hope everything is well at your home today or wherever you happen to be listening to this episode. And I pray what we have for you today will be a great blessing to you. Uh, I've been uh, sharing several several episodes about salvation stories and people that I've seen that have gotten saved over the years and some of them in very unique situations how the Lord saved them. Some were uh, older, some were younger. And uh, so we've had a lot of great uh, testimonies of uh, salvation on this podcast. And I've got a couple of guests here with me today. Uh, I have uh, one of the preachers in our church, Brother Nathan Embry. And also I have his son with us, Brother Hunter Embry. And... uh, Brother Hunter, last night uh, in the service, uh, came to know the Lord. He repented of his sins, and God forgave him and saved him, and now Hunter's a new man. He's a born-again Christian. So we're going to be hearing from both of them in just a moment. Hunter's 11 years old, and I've been his pastor ever since he's been alive. He's always been a, a, a very good young man. But in his own words, just a few minutes ago, before we started this, I've never really prayed. I've never really asked God to forgive me until last night. And uh, he was so excited last night that he said, we need to go celebrate. So a lot of us folks, isn't that right, Hunter? Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, we all went out last night and had uh, ice uh, balls. Yeah, ice balls with ice cream in them. And it was it was just great. So, and he's he's wanting to be baptized. So we're going to do that soon. But I first want to uh, uh, ask his dad to uh, come on here and say something. And those of you that follow our podcast, you you probably remember we done a series with Brother Nathan Embry and his wife, Sister Carrie. She is the young lady in our church that uh, had a brain aneurysm had several strokes, and things really looked bad for her. But God raised her up and healed her body. And this is her husband, and this is her son. So they're rejoicing today, and we're rejoicing with them. And I am really privileged to have Hunter uh, come on this program as a young man, not quite 12 years old yet, uh, giving his life to Jesus. So if you're out there and you're a young person, don't think you're too young to ask the Lord into your heart. You're not. The Lord can and will save you as well. So, Brother Nathan Embry, I want you to share with us today. Thank you, Brother Miller. We appreciate it, Pastor. Uh, it is a privilege to be here with Hunter today. And um, we, uh, Hunter and I just keep smiling, and sometimes we'll just chuckle and laugh because our hearts are full of joy today. For what God has done for Hunter and Hunter accepting Christ into his life. And so I just want to start by saying thank you, Jesus, uh, for his salvation power and what he has done for Hunter. And our whole family is just rejoicing today. And uh, God had been reaching for Hunter for several weeks now. And there had been uh, songs that had been sung in church and messages that were preached by our pastor that were touching Hunter's heart uh, as just a young uh, boy here, and you know we would get in the car and they would make comments about uh, songs that were sung in church about getting ready to leave this world and uh, making my record right, watching both day and night, getting ready to leave this world, and he would say, you know, I I hope they don't sing that song again, and we would say, well, you know, why not? And um, and, and we would have a discussion about how. Uh, he was realizing that he was not ready, that he had not accepted Jesus Christ into his heart. And his mother and I began to speak and say, well, if you realize 
and you're acknowledging that you're not ready, uh, it, it's time that you get ready. It's time that you uh, think seriously about praying and recognizing your need for salvation and going to the Lord and asking Him to forgive you of uh, your sins. And so last night we saw the fulfillment of that uh, in church, and uh, we're just we're just so happy today. Amen. And you can you can tell I just spoke with his grandpa a minute ago, and I thought I'd tell him the new the new news. I said, "Well, I want to tell you about your grandson." He said, "Oh, I've already heard." Said Hunter, "Call me the last night. Call me today." He said, "You can tell by his voice." Said I could tell by looking at his face what a change that was made in his life, and it was quite a change. So, I'm going to ask Hunter here. Uh, uh, some questions, and we're going to just interview back and forth. So, uh, first of all, Hunter, you really believe the Lord came into your heart and saved you, right? Yes. Amen. Did you feel any different after you prayed? Yes. I just had this warm, happy feeling. Praise God. Amen. Now, last uh, last night, he told me, he said, uh, he said, you know, Pastor, he said, I've been listening to you for about a month, I think you told me. And he said, uh, it seemed like every Sunday, he said, you was preaching about getting saved. And, and he said, I knew I wasn't. And he said, it was bothering me, but I wanted to be sure. He said, I didn't want to start and, and, and go back. Uh, I can't believe with what intelligence this young man uh, spoke with me at an early age. But I'm very, very proud of Hunter. Uh, I'll give you a little setting, and then we're going to talk with him. Uh, last night, we have a, a youth service at 5.30 in the evening. Brother brother uh, Blake preached last night at 5.30 service, and he preached about those uh, uh, three things in the book of uh, Luke. Is it 15, I believe? You know, the, the hundred sheep, one going astray, uh, the the prodigal son, and what they really keyed on was that woman had 10 coins and one of the coins was lost. And that woman lit a candle, searched till she found the coin. So after that was over, <clears throat> we had our regular service, our evening service. And after some songs and testimonies and so on, uh, I asked one of our evangelists in the church to come and speak before I preached but the Lord had other plans. I mean, God anointed him so great. Uh, I don't care to tell you his name. I don't usually tell a lot of names, Brother David Eldridge. And he preached so uh, powerfully uh, last night. And he preached on the same thing about that lost coin. So uh, we're going to talk more to you about that. But uh, I want to ask uh, Brother Hunter some questions here. And uh, last night... Uh, you had told me something that really uh, touched your heart last night. Why don't you share with the people what it was? Well, Brother Mike brought his friend with him, Brother Uber. Yes. And Brother Miller asked Brother Uber to come and testify. And he was talking about on his way to work and how he felt like the Lord told him that this month was the month of preparation. Yes. And you told me if that was a month of preparation... I wonder what comes after this month. Yeah, I wonder what comes after. And uh, didn't you say something like, well, I'm not prepared. Yes, I'm not ready. Yeah. But I'm ready now. You're ready now, praise God. Amen. And uh, so Hunter said he was thinking about that. And, and then the whole service just seemed like it went geared toward the altar service, didn't it? Brother Mike done great, he sung and testified and brought some of his church over because uh, Pastor Mike is not able to have evening service yet. So we was blessed to have him. But when uh, Brother Dave Eldridge began to preach uh, last night, I'm going to let Hunter tell you uh, what he done when he came off the platform and he reached in his pocket. You tell him the rest. And he gave me a coin that he had. Yes. And he talked about the lost coins. Yes. And I began to think, I think I'm that lost coin that he's talking about. Yes. And I asked my mom a few questions. 
And she told me to pray. I said, um, well, we might have to redo because I just no, forgot you, what I was No, you done good. Just keep right on talking. Well, I told my mom what that um, Brother Hoover said yeah. began to bother me because I'm not ready. Yes. And I got down and prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed. Yeah. Yes, you did. Amen. And when Brother Dave was preaching about that coin, he said he reached in his pocket, and he told me, he said, he said Brother Miller, I never carry coins. Never. He said, I just stuck my hand in my pocket while I was preaching. And he stepped off of the platform down into the uh to where the congregation was. And he's talking about the coin. He said he felt a coin. And he said he just picked up the coin. It was it was only a penny. And he said he looked at it and he thought, well, you know what? He said, I've got, I've got this penny here. And he said, most folks think of a penny as not much. Not worth a lot. Not worth much at all. They just uh, throw them away or throw them over in a corner or something like that. And... Uh, when he was preaching, he actually threw the the penny out into the crowd. Remember that, Honor? Yes. And uh, so he went on and he preached about that a while. And he said, but he said, the lights are all on and we're all here. And he's talking about how the lady lit the candle and uh, swept until she found the coin. He said, the lights are on and right there's the, the coin. He said, what we need to do is get out our spiritual brooms and start sweeping. And uh, it was so awesome how God uh, just orchestrated that service, I thought. And when he preached and, and after Hunter prayed, like he said, he prayed and prayed and prayed. And I'm glad he did. He prayed till he knew he was ready to meet God. And after the Lord come into his heart and he, he stood, he testified. And I think that's great, Hunter. People should stand up and and tell what that they know God saved them. So when he did, Brother Eldridge came over to you and said, uh, I want you to have this coin. And he told him, he said, it's not worth much. But uh, I told Hunter, I said, what are you going to do with that coin? And put it on my Bible or, and eventually make it into a necklace of some sort. Okay. He's going to save it, right? Yes. Right. I think that is great that he... Uh, that he felt that way. And for this young man to say, I think I'm that lost coin. And this is a great testimony. I've been telling you about a lot of testimony of older folks that got saved just in time. But we're talking not about, but to an 11 and a half year old young man here today that gave his heart to Jesus. So you can start at any time. Hunter, I'll, I'll ask you, can a person get saved at any age? Yes. Amen. You're how old? Eleven and a half. And you got saved last night? Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, while we were sitting there uh, last night, uh, fellowshipping with a family, uh, he came over and told me, he said, I don't know how long it's going to be. He said, uh, you've been preaching about the Lord coming back and and uh, he said, do you have any clue? I said this, Hunter, it could be 20 minutes. It could be 20 years. We don't know. We just have to be ready and occupy until he comes. And he said, I'm going to do that. I'm going to stay ready. I, am, I can't explain to you how proud I am of Hunter. And I mentioned this podcast to him. I said, man, I've been doing these podcasts. And I said, I may tell about you. And he got excited. He said, you want me to come up and help you? I said, yeah. So he came to the house today, him and his dad. And uh, so I'm hoping he'll tell all of his young friends to listen to this podcast today. If you have any friends out there and they're younger folks, I want you to tell them to listen in to the, today's episode about Hunter Embry becoming a born-again Christian and a child of God. Thank God for that. Yes. Is there anything else you'd like to say, share with them? Well, 
I haven't told my parents about this or anybody else, but a few nights ago, while we were praying, because you know how we pray at night, mm -hmm. and I asked uh, God, when are we going to go? Just tell me, when are we going to leave? Yeah. And that was maybe last week. Uh-huh. And here he came, um, Brother... Uber? Uber, yeah. yes. Right. And he was talking about that, and I, I wasn't sure about that. I, I'm like, oh my gosh, it really did happen. Yeah. I prayed for it to happen. Yes. But I knew I needed to get down and pray. I just wasn't, I wasn't really sure, but I did. Yes. And I got saved. Praise God. So the thing of it was, he, he kept saying it. Uh, they were singing songs about getting ready to leave. Uh, they were preaching sermons about it. I'm trying to think of the title I used just a couple weeks ago, but I preached, oh, I, my sermon title uh, two or three Sunday mornings ago was Be Ye Also Ready. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord's been speaking. And, you know, I looked out over the crowd because I've been preaching to the lost for several Sundays. And I thought, Lord, who am I preaching this to? Why, why do you keep giving me these? sermons like this and sometimes we look out there for somebody we think is maybe deep in sin or older and ready to meet God and all along there may be somebody there we overlook that's a young person that needs salvation just like uh, the older folks are so I'm praying that this spawns a revival in my local church and a lot of our other young folks like Hunter uh, will follow him and come and pray and uh, seek the Lord uh, for salvation for their self. Uh, I want to ask uh, Brother Embry if he has something else he wants to add here. I just want, I want to say that you are uh, make a great point there, Pastor, that, um, I, you know, even I uh, stood there last night and said, God, who are you? Who are you talking to? You know, yeah. search me. What, what, who are you trying to reach? And, I looked across the congregation uh, as I stood up there by the music, and 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 then I seen my my wife was knelt down. Yeah. And and it, I knew then what was occurring. And I knew who God had been reaching for that entire time, and that God was speaking to my son and and dealing with his heart uh, to pray. And um, I just echo your thoughts that if whatever the congregation may look like it doesn't yes. matter god knows who's there and, yes and uh no matter if they're young or they're old when that message goes out there is a purpose and there is a person that it is for amen any final remarks brother hunter i believe god was telling brother miller to he he was preaching to me Thank i you. believe he was talking he was talking to me that that's who it was for it was for me praise god I am so proud of this young man. Who knows? Who knows? He he might win a lot of those. They a lot of those young ones that age really love Hunter and they look up to Hunter. And I'm praying that that you become that uh, stabilizing force and that you live good in front of them and that you let them know that Jesus loves them and that He cares. So, in closing this uh, episode today, like I said earlier. I, I never asked this, but I'm asking you, please, uh, share this particular episode and uh, tell others that have young folks that may not be a Christian uh, that they need to listen to this episode. God can save anyone at any age. I was a young man, but not quite as young as Hunter. But And somebody asked me, how old do you have to be to become a Christian? I said, when you come to the age of accountability or the age that you know right from wrong and you know that you need to be saved, that's the right age. Whether that's 9 or 10 or 15 or 16. And don't discount these young folks because Hunter knew that God was dealing with them and he gave his life to Jesus. So I'm very, very proud to have him on my episode uh, today on this podcast, a PhD in the morning. And uh, I think he was glad to be on here, wasn't you? Yes. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Amen. Amen. So be sure and listen in the next time 
uh, to PHT in the morning with Pastor David Miller. So hope I've been a blessing. Hope Hunter and uh, Brother Embry has been a blessing. So I just want to say to you, go with God, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.